Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fireside Chat number 261. Now, you're probably wondering why didn't I ask Megan, too, what number it was, because I remember last week was 260. It's not impressive, but I just thought I'd share that with you. This is Snoopy. As many of you know, Otto, for reasons that only the good Lord above knows, has in the last couple of months pretty much opted out of his traditional role. I, I don't know why, because it's hard to read a dog's mind. If you think it's hard to read your spouse's mind, whew, this is a bigger challenge. I'm Dennis Prager. This is the Fireside Chat. And just to recount, it is truly spontaneous. I offer you some thoughts. It's really you and I. And then I take your questions. And it's, it's a delight to do every week. So I always begin with some thoughts, and I have been writing in my re weekly column, which I invite you to read. There are literally 1,000 of them on the internet, and I don't think any of them are dated, so pick any one you want, and I think you'll read a second, and maybe you'll end up reading a few hundred. I put a lot of uh, thought into the uh, weekly column. So I've started a a series called What is Conservatism? The word is used a great deal. It's attacked a great deal, and it's used positively a great deal. But if you ask almost anyone what is conservatism, you may not get a, a truly coherent answer. People feel it. People who are conservatives, they, they feel that they're a conservative, but they may not be able to articulate what it truly stands for. By the way, this has been the great problem of religion and of America and of, of the West in general. Parents and teachers did not communicate what these things stand for. And if you don't, you will simply lose it. So, for example, American parents didn't teach their kids what America stands for. Of course, I'm generalizing. Some did. Christian parents did not truly explain Christianity, Jewish parents did not truly explain Judaism, and then they wonder, uh, they, and often these are wonderful people, but they wonder, gee, what happened? Why is my kid disinterested in any of these things? You have to articulate what you stand for. My life has been devoted in large measure to explaining what people don't explain. All these values, that's the reason for my series on the Bible, the Rational Bible, to use reason to explain the first five books, the major books of the Bible, as an example. So what is conservatism? So the first and foremost thing is liberty, freedom, that the individual be free. What does that mean, though? Obviously, it is not free to murder, free to steal. What does it mean? It means that you are free within the bounds of, of morality, obviously, to do what you want and to say what you want. The greatest freedom is freedom of speech. Because if you can't say what you believe, you, you are reduced as a human being. It, it is an assault on human dignity to deprive people of the right to express themselves. It's truly evil and it's truly common. It's happening in America today, for the first time in American history, that people are being deprived of freedom of speech. So I'd like to talk about another aspect of conservatism that is almost never talked about, but it is what the word actually means, to conserve. What is it that the conservative wishes to conserve? This is big. We wish to conserve. Big tech censorship continues to be a big problem for PragerU, and it's more important than ever that our audience watches our content on our platform. To continue watching this episode of the Fireside Chat, go to PragerU.com or download the PragerU mobile app today.